What's up everyone? How you doing today? Today is September 14th, 2021. Tim Cook and all of his closest friends just wrapped up the newest California streaming event, which covers the iPhone 13, iPhone 13 Pro, Apple Watch Series 7, iPad Mini, iPad. We've got a lot to talk about, so roll that intro. Okay, so as I said, we do have a lot to cover. So I'm just gonna jump right into it, guys. My voice, unfortunately, is not at 100%, but, but I'm not gonna let that stop me from talking your heads off. Let's just jump right into the good info. So I have all my coverage here on the left for the iPad, iPad mini, Apple Watch Series 7, iPhone 13, and iPhone 13 Pro. Now, please keep in mind, I'm not gonna cover every single detail that Tim and all of his, again, closest friends talked about today because there's a lot to talk about and I'm not at my best, you know, when it comes to my health. Um, I'm still kind of, you know, coming back from COVID, which sucks. Trust me, COVID sucks. You don't want it. So instead, I'm going to focus on things that mean the most to me. Now, ironically, this first thing I'm talking about doesn't mean a lot to me, but I'm going to talk about it anyway, because maybe some of you care. Let's talk about the brand new, you know, brand new iPad. Yes, the regular sized iPad. Now, in my opinion, this is more of an iPad light. You know, this is kind of the iPad that schools focus on, or perhaps maybe if you're really tight on money and, and while you just want that full screen iPad experience and you don't care about thin bezels and the latest features, because for example, this new iPad doesn't even support the second generation Apple Pencil. So me personally, I would avoid this like COVID, you know? Honestly, I would. Uh, this isn't for me, but again, this is more of an education or an iPad light focused audience that Apple's going after. Hence the price, by the way. It starts at $329 or $299 for education. Okay, so let's go over some features here. We have an A13 Bionic, which isn't the best, but hey, again, iPad light, who cares? Um, you do have a new ultra-wide front camera with center stage support. Center stage support could be huge. For me personally, it's not that important, but hey, if you want it, it's there. And it starts at 64 gigabyte storage. Let's just go down here. 20% faster CPU, I mean, I mean, I'm sorry, GPU. 20% faster GPU, which is great for playing games and all that stuff. We've got the neural engine, all day battery life. You can take notes with the first generation Apple Pencil. We have a 10.2 inch Retina display. That right there could be enough for most people. I mean, I love Retina, I love pixels, I love DPIs, um, so I, I, I love sharp displays. So in theory, if I was really, really tight on money and I wanted an iPad-like experience, well, then I would get the regular size iPad. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, this is a fantastic device um, if you want an iPad. But me personally, I would just stay away from it. It's not for me. Okay, so with that said, let's move on to the more exciting stuff, the iPad mini. But first, let me take a drink. My, my voice sounds... Horrible. Whoa there, iPad. Whoa, chill, chill. Okay, so a little bit of history about me. I used to love the iPad mini. Absolutely love the iPad mini. And then I became obsessed with these max sized iPhones, you know? Basically, you get a bigger display, which honestly isn't that much smaller than the iPad mini. However, however, there's something that sold me right away. This iPad mini... They could have easily, easily kept the same design as the new iPad, but they didn't, thankfully. Instead, it's kind of like an iPad Air Mini, which sold me right away because I love this bezel design. I absolutely love it. Sure, you don't get Face ID, but the fact that you get this minimal design in a smaller package and at the same time, you don't have to spend as much money as the iPad Pro. That, in my opinion, is huge. So I can say right now, guys, with confidence, I am buying this iPad Mini. It's been years since I've had one, and I want that larger display, and I'll talk about that more in a bit. Okay, so here we go. iPad Mini. Bada bing, bada boom. Apple doing all the marketing fluff, you know. Okay, so new off-screen design. We got an A15. Bionic chip, which is a significant jump from the A13 in the regular iPad. We do have 5G support, 
which honestly, they didn't need to put in the iPad mini, but they did anyway. So that's huge. Support for Apple Pencil, second generation Apple Pencil on that. So that's huge. Four colors. And we have 500 nits, peak brightness, true tone support. Obviously, I think every single Apple device nowadays has true tone support. P3 wide color gamut, which is always nice for those high, high contrast uh, photos and videos that you want to be taking and viewing and all that stuff. Touch ID support. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't have Face ID. I would have liked that, but we don't need Face ID in the iPad mini. So much like other Apple products, we do have Touch ID built in to the home button, which is... Very nice, very, very nice. 40% faster CP performance. And of course we have that Apple neural engine that they love talking about. Up to two times faster machine learning. Six core CPU guys, six core CPU on an iPad mini. That is awesome. Up to 80% faster graphics, 80% faster. Now keep in mind, we've not had an iPad mini upgrade in quite a while. So on paper, 80% faster sounds like a lot. But if you factor in the last time we had an iPad mini upgrade, which is what? A couple years ago? A few years ago? I don't know. But still, I mean, if you have the previous generation iPad mini and you're going from there to this, huge upgrade. Absolutely huge upgrade. And plus, I haven't had an iPad in quite a while, so I think I'm due for one. We've got that all day battery life. Very nice. Ultra fast with 5G. USB-C supports. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That in itself is huge. Very nice. Ultra wide camera. Very nice. Center stage support. Again, that doesn't mean a lot to me, but who knows? Maybe I'll like it. And of course, we've got a ton of accessories at work with this brand new iPad mini. Trust me, guys. I wish my voice sounded better. I wish it did. But unfortunately, I'm not at that point in my recovery. But I'm not going to let that stop me from passing out. Okay, so yes, iPad mini, I'm buying it. It's available next week, and it starts at $4.99. That is a little expensive, a little, little on the expensive side, in my opinion. I would have liked maybe $3.49, but hey, it is what it is. We're getting a complete iPad mini refresh with all new designs, all new features, so what do you expect, you know? Apple Watch Series 7. Now this... This I will be getting, okay? Keep in mind, I have the Apple Watch Series 6 in red, and I think I'm gonna sell it. You know, I don't typically sell my Apple Watch, but I want this new design. However, I'm not gonna be, you know, so hyped for this Apple Watch like I'm hyped for the iPad mini and the iPhone 13 Pro. More online a bit. Anyway, with that said, I will definitely be getting the Apple Watch Series 7, and thankfully, Apple did say it's coming out later this fall. So that could mean late October, late November. So in other words, I'm in no rush, which is really nice because I'm going to be spending enough money as it is on the iPad mini and the iPhone 13 Pro. Okay, so we've up to 33% faster charging, which is nice. Definitely nice, most durable Apple Watch ever, which isn't concerning to me because I've never, ever cracked my Apple Watch. Maybe just because I'm careful. Maybe because I have brain cells that talk to one another. I don't know. But the biggest Feature of all, bigger display, larger display, which is actually saying a lot for an Apple Watch. We have 20% more screen real estate, guys. 20% more screen real estate, which is definitely quite nice. My God, look at this. That's what I used to use. Look how tiny the Series 3 used to be. Actually, still is, obviously. Series 6, which is this one, and Series 7. So if you compare the bezel design of the Series 6 to the Series 7, we have a significant, significant decrease in bezel design and overall increase in display size. Very nice. Always on right display. I love this always on display, by the way. Absolutely love it. Love it, love it, love it. Tap, type, swipe. We now have an on-screen keyboard, an Apple Watch first, as you can see right here, a full QWERTY on-screen display for your keyboard. That's actually pretty big for an Apple Watch because, you know, tapping on the screen isn't that fun, but obviously the larger display we get, the easier it's going to be. Okay, so scrolling down, crack resistant, dust resistant, water resistant. Very nice. 
And yes, I have gone swimming many times with my Apple Watch. Never had a serious issue. I love it. Of course, they have all the health features. And bada bing, bada boom. Honestly, there's nothing radically that different about the Apple Watch besides the larger display. And honestly, guys, that's enough for me. A larger display is enough for me to want to sell this one and buy that one. Okay. iPhone 13. I am seriously ready to pass out. But it is what it is. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I just feel so not me, you know? Water break. Relax, David. One of these days, I'll get my health back and my strength back. Guys, if you haven't been keeping up, I did have COVID and I have fatigue right now. So even just talking makes me feel weak. But with that said, after this video, I promise I'm going to relax after I'm done editing. Okay, so iPhone 13 Pro. This is a device I'm going to be getting. I'm not even going to talk about the iPhone 13, okay? I'm sorry. I'm just not going to. So let's just skip to the iPhone 13 Pro because I need to relax myself. Um, and honestly, this is the device I care most about. So, Apple absolutely killed it today from a content creation perspective. They focused so much on not only photography, but especially video. This new cinematic feature that they're rolling out is absolutely incredible. Okay, first of all, we have the iPhone 13 Pro Max, 6.7 inch display size iPhone 13 Pro, this is the one I'm getting, 6.1 inch. So keep in mind, I currently have the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Love this display, love it, love it, love it. But I'm ready to downgrade, in a way, to the regular sized iPhone 13. I mean, that's typically what I like to do. And plus, with this new iPad mini, I still get that larger screen experience while not using my iPhone or not using like a full-size iPad or iPad Air. Makes sense? To me, it does. Oh, and by the way, ProMotion, can we please nerdgasm for a second? Can we please just express how big of a deal this is? I've wanted this for years. ProMotion, for those who don't know, is Apple's marketing term for a 120 hertz display. If you've only been using 60 hertz, my friends, my friends, you are certainly missing out. As a huge gamer myself, I game every single day, at least when I can. Gaming on a 144 hertz display, absolute game changer, pun intended. So going from 60 hertz to 120 hertz on my iPhone is going to be absolutely freaking incredible. And yes, I've used ProMotion before on the iPad Pro. It's a big deal. It's a huge deal, absolutely huge deal. That in itself is the main reason why I'm getting the iPhone 13 Pro and not the regular iPhone 13. Guys, I'm telling you, it's a huge deal. Macro photography, I love macro photography. I'm a huge fan of macro. I just think it's incredible. Honestly, guys, if you've never done macro photography, you are sorely missing out because when you look at everyday objects, like your Apple Watch or this glass of water, up close, it will honestly blow your mind. Honestly blow your mind. And the fact that it's built into the brand new lenses is absolutely incredible. Macro video as well. Look at this, guys. Look at this. This is recorded on an iPhone 13 Pro. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Look at those details, including slow motion and time lapse. Incredible. Of course, Apple's going to continue to get better each year with night mode, Low light photography, 92% more light from the ultra wide lens. 92% more light. That's huge. That's huge. Now keep in mind, guys, I understand. Not everyone is into photography and video like I am. But from a content creator's perspective, this is huge. Every single detail matters. Now we have three times optical zoom instead of two times. Very nice. Love it. This is a game changer in itself, guys. Shooting in cinematic mode, this could be huge. This actually is huge. Keep in mind, the iPhone 13 Pro can actually record using a depth map, meaning you can actually edit your depth of focus, depth of video, 
after it's recorded. Say, for instance, you recorded the screen right here. Okay, the scene, I mean, not the screen, the scene. And you want to focus on this person's face instead of her um, face. You can do that in post. Absolutely huge. I know, I know. I'm kind of like overselling this like I work for Apple. But guys, insane. Absolutely insane. That is so freaking awesome. I haven't been this excited about an iPhone since the iPhone 11 Pro Max. iPhone 12 didn't do much for me because obviously I had an iPhone 11. But the fact that I'm skipping a year is huge. You can record in ProRes, which to me honestly doesn't mean a lot. But to the pros out there, apparently this is huge. So there you go. Just amazing. Completely redesigned camera system, by the way. We have a telephoto, ultra wide, and wide. Same as last time, but as far as I'm concerned, each lens is significantly better, lets in more light, which is always a good thing. Always, always a good thing. Less noise is very nice. I sound horrible, don't I? I sound absolutely horrible. Up to one terabyte. You can actually get one terabyte of storage now. Now, honestly, as huge as that is, pun intended, I don't need that. If we go to my about section, my iPhone, this is a 256 gigabyte 11 Pro Max, right? I still have 183 gigs free. 183 gigs free, guys. So I still might go like 256 gigs again. I don't know. There's ProMotion, absolutely huge. Better gaming, 25% brighter outdoors, 1200 nits. Longer battery life, by the way. Five core GPU, 5G support, of course. Keep in mind, this is my first 5G iPhone ever. Privacy built in. Don't forget, guys, Siri commands now happen directly on your iPhone. That's huge for two reasons. Number one, privacy. And number two, more importantly for me, speed. Speed, speed, speed. Thank you. Huge. Absolutely huge. And boom. There you go. Okay, so we did not get AirPods 3, which is whatever. We'll probably get them in October. Uh, but there you go, guys. The iPhone 13 Pro does start at $9.99. It's available September 24th, which is next Friday. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to be pre-ordering this Friday. And there you go. Sorry, guys, this video is not as uh, focused and note-driven as it usually is. But, yeah, you guys got to keep in mind, I feel horrible right now. I feel horrible. My, my, my voice is at like 50% capacity, it sucks. But guys, there you go. What are your thoughts on the iPhone 13, iPhone 13 Pro, Apple Watch Series 7, iPad mini, and regular iPad? Quick recap, I am buying the iPad mini, Apple Watch Series 7, and iPhone 13 Pro. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let's have a conversation in the comments, and I'll talk to you soon. Peace.